<laughs> the next match is one that I also told you to skip, essentially, because it was Cuban Assassin, Fidel Sierra versus Wildfire, Tommy Rich, who was returning to WCW, or the NWA, I should say. Um, even on the commentary, Jim Ross says that Rich disappeared into obscurity. Obscurity being Memphis. In the yeah. mid 1980s, he doesn't say Memphis, but he just says obscurity in the, in the <laughs> mid 1980s. So, was this a shot at Memphis, or is this a. Sh- what is this in aid of to basically say Tommy Rich just disappeared off the face of the planet for years? Yeah. They're, they're, well, first of all, the one thing about Tommy Rich was uh, if you remember back, they had, uh, when uh, I think Kurt Henning was there in, in Memphis, they had this uh, cage match. Where, as I recall, that was the first time I'd seen on TV as a kid a crowd lose its mind. Uh, they had the cage match, and then afterwards, you see somebody come up to the, and they cut, they've been hiding under the ring, and they get in and they shave it. I mean, the fans were like trying to climb and get in. I mean, the, the place just went nuts. Uh, Tommy, when you go back and you watch like, that first iteration, again, the world was different. Uh, but boy, he came in. He was that first modern baby face, that baby face that could take that ass whoop and get busted open. All of a sudden, man, he started making that fiery comeback. He was the template that most baby faces after fed off of. And, and so, like, for me, I'm always willing to give the, the, the credit where the credit's due for those guys. Uh, I was a mimicker, I mimicked the wrestlers that came before me. Uh, guys like Sabu, uh, Tommy Rich then, uh, d- 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 you know, Ray Mysterio Jr. later. These are transitional figures. These are people that once they're in the business, once they expose their wares, the business is different afterwards. I was a wrestler, but the guys that wrestled before me, uh, and there have been wrestlers after me. But those guys, made they, they took the business someplace different than before it. Uh, Tommy was not a big guy before that, you know, the baby faces that got pushed were the bigger guys, your bruiser looking guys, you're the uh, you know, push the pushes like the bam bam pushes. Uh, suddenly here comes this, you know, comparatively smaller guy, gets his ass whooped, boy, he's won't say die. And that changed, changed baby faced them after that. Uh, so you know, I give a lot of credit that this is the time I think with Jim Ross's comment where. You know, we had these camps sprout up, right? There were still, you still had Portland, uh, you still had Continental, you still had Memphis, obviously. But by now, the WWF had become this growing behemoth. And uh, NWA was on the cusp of transforming into WCW and then into WCW. So you had these smaller territories are now sort of pulling in, still being fairly successful. Uh, but uh, this was the time where it's we're warring with this company and these other guys are just, you know, wannabes or pretenders or whatever. That would be my guess as to why there was a shot taken. And it could have also been something as easy as some kind of inside joke between him and, and, and uh, Lawler or uh, somebody else at, at, at Memphis at that time. But, th- but by now, wrestling is becoming much more of a two-game race, right? It's a two-man race at this point. I uh, also noted that I don't know if it was a shot at Memphis, but Ric Flair had recently made shoot comments on a radio station burying Jerry Lawler as nothing but a joke world champion at the time. So I don't know if it's just something against Memphis. But uh, sticking with Tommy, could Rich... Right, so, I mean, I've interviewed Tommy, and I think... I think he'd say... I don't know if he'd say or admit it, but basically he likes a drink. That's got in his way of his career. Um You know, we're not telling any tales out of school there. He'll say the same thing. Could, if Rich had been on the more straight and narrow, could he have been bigger? Because obviously, you know, he's he's huge in his early to mid-20s. And then when he comes to more national uh, companies like WCW or later ECW, it's in reduced roles, even though he's still a fairly young man. Could he have been bigger or was he always destined to be like a regional hit? Could he ever been like a national main eventer? Absolutely. Assuming certain things all being equal, uh, if he had you know gotten into the gym, worked you know worked on his bike. Remember, he's just the young skinny kid, which is, I think part of what made that character the selling and all of that. Uh, by now, he's ensconced. You know that, that generation of fans that he played to were part of. They hadn't left. They were part of what made this massive 
uh, group play because more people were coming in. So absolutely, excuse me, if Tommy had not gone the route of the, the drinking and the things that you said that he, he would tell you, uh, absolutely could have been. And I think in many ways, probably could have been uh, had like his run as the, in the ring and then transitioned into the backstage area. Baby faces at that time, I can tell you, as a baby face at that time, uh, it was sort of just like fly by the seat of your pants. You know, you were learning stuff from different wrestlers, different styles every night, but nobody was coming to you and saying, okay, as a baby face, this is what a baby face is, and this is what fire is, and this is what a comeback in selling is. There was nobody doing that. And so you look back, and each of us had our own sort of way of doing it, and it was almost like you found it haphazardly. You sort of stumbled into it if you got it right. Uh, very rare that anybody in those dress rooms was saying, okay, let me educate you. Uh, and I don't mean to say that, like, in the flair sense, they were using it as a weapon, but, like, you would, I, I've mentioned this before, like, if you went to the room with Pez Wadi, you're going to work, say, like, a three-month program with Pez. Pez is going to go into that and thinking, okay, I'm going to teach him this, this, and this, and just those three things, and he might occasionally throw something else in there, or whatever, but that's, his his goal is to get these three things into you. He's not worried about getting you up to the main event, or even semi-main, or even half card, second half card position his job is to teach you those few things whatever the number is and each person beyond that is you know going to be adding their two cents worth to it i think tommy because he he was such the epitome the, the epitome or personification right of a baby face and what baby faces had become by that time would have been invaluable to have as a coach in the back for us kids that were coming in at that time yeah he, he most certainly could have